Hello and welcome to lesson one of learning to use Borrow Smart, Repay Smart. You're going to see a login screen. It looks something like this. Some things in throughout this video may look a little different because we're constantly making updates. Uh, but generally, you're going to have a login screen that either your company's providing or that we've provided for you. And you're going to always go to this login screen. This is where you're going to put in your uh, uh, your email and your password and you're going to click login. If you ever forget your password, click here after putting in your email and we'll send you a reminder. If for some reason you're at this screen, you're seeing it, and you can't log in, you probably haven't registered and we'll need to click here to go register. So we'll click the login tab and this is what you should see the first time you log into the software. You're going to be uh, defaulting to the presentations tab. Uh, you'll either have a presentations or a flyer version of the software. That's our minimum base version and these icons here could look different depending on the different options that you've chosen to when you purchased or uh, when your company purchased the software for you. You'll have five preloaded plans. These are sample plans that you can go in and explore. These, uh, this particular box, Quick Select a Recent Plan, is a way for you to quickly select one of the 10 most recent plans that you've been working with. Anytime you create a new plan, it'll always show up at the top of this box. It'll make it fast and easy to find plans that you're currently working with. On the right here, you'll see Quick Find an Existing Plan. Every plan you've ever created will be over here in this list. You can search. You can export all of your client information to a CSV file to import it into other contact management programs. You can also find multiple plans. You can have an unlimited number of plans per client. So if you do a loan for Joe and Sally Smith as a purchase and a year later they want to refinance, you can simply find and search for Joe and Sally, open that uh, client, and then duplicate that and create a new plan if you'd like to duplicate the plan or start a new plan uh, for their refinance. That'll pull in all that old information and make it quick and easy for you to find. You can transfer plans uh, to other partners and, and other people that you're connected with through the software. And of course, you can delete a plan. So what we're going to do before we go into using the software itself, the main tab is your presentations tab. And you'll see the manage, borrow, and present are our simple three-step process for managing liabilities of your client. Before we do that, we want to make sure that the software meets your specific branding needs and you've gone through and set up the core initial elements. And we're going to go down to the left. Whatever version you have, you'll see at the bottom left in a My Account tab. And when I click that My Account tab, it's going to take me into an area where I can edit my branding, my defaults, and I can manage my billing. So we're going to start here on the branding tab. You should see up in the lower left, or in the upper left here, a place for your flyers and website photos. So throughout uh, the plan creation process, there'll be times when you may want to brand your information uh, with a, a photo. Many of the uh, different materials that we create for you, including uh, the mobile apps, the websites, the microsites, are all going to pull this particular photo. So what we want to do here is you'll have no photo lo loaded initially. We're going to want to change your photo to something that you'd like to use. And we'll do that by clicking the Change Photo button. So I click the change photo and it's going to ask me to browse for that photo and I click the browse button and I will go to the folder that I have uh, this particular information in. Here it is, BSA sample and there's a photo. So you're going to navigate to your, to your particular image and you're going to click save and you should see an immediate preview and this is your photo that's going to show up and be available for a variety of different uh, uses. Next thing is my company logo. We put a generic in there just so you can see where that's going to show up. Okay, so I won't change that, but you'll simply click the change logo and just like before, browse to your company logo, find it and click save and you'll see that change out as well. Now, next thing is your information. You want to make sure that all this information is in here. New, your first name and last name are required, address, city, state, zip, email, phone number, fax, title, company name, so I might put in my company. I'll just go through and, uh, and uh, put these in here so you can see where they show up on different reports. My phone, my fax, my title, my company, and let's say my North Carolina UID is 81819745, my website, and your password. This is a good time to go ahead and change your password or put in the name again so that you know it. It's going to show up right here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in this particular password. 
Now, down below, you'll notice there's a Save button, which saves all of these changes. So now, Company Graphic. Now, this is for your main report cover. And you can change this, and you can put in any image you want. We'll automatically scale it for you. You can say, Use No Report Graphic. We've got one loaded for you. So again, you can see where it goes on, and, and generates on the report. So I won't change it. But you can change that report graphic the same way, clicking Browse and finding an image. We recommend that you maybe take an image off of your website because you want this to look like it's a continuation of your brand and your company. So, so far what we've got is we've got your picture, your logo, all of your personal information. We've also got your company graphic um, uh, photo and report cover. Now, notice I didn't save this and I should have done this. So one tip here is when you go through and make changes like this, um, it's good to go ahead and click the Save button. Uh, when you're actually using the software, everything is saved for you automatically because we're automatically syncing the information on every field to make sure that you're getting the most accurate numbers and also to make it easier for you when you're doing the work. So I'm going to go through and, and put that in again. I'll just come down here and click the Save All Changes button and you'll notice all that is saved now. So you can change your report cover. Now you'll notice that one of the options that I have is background. I just clicked architecture and you'll notice what happened on the background. It changed. So with the architecture button, I can come here and change it to anything that I like. Maybe I like the calm lake. And what you're going to see here is now you'll notice that the background is now a calm lake background. So this is cool. You can pick anything that uh, you like. If you go with uh, our default, uh, you're going to get sort of that same image you saw before with the housing. So take some time and find an image that looks good to you, something that you think might represent. You might want to play around. If you have a, a, a logo with some orange in it or an orange theme on your website, pick something like uh, Orange Swirl. That'll tie again into your overall company branding. If uh, maybe you're, uh, you have some red and blue, uh, you might go through and as you're playing with this, you might pick something like a painting, which has some nice uh, red and blues in it. Uh, maybe if uh, you just like something that's just sort of soft and subtle, you can pick something like small chairs. These are all different themes we've created uh, for you to use for your background. Now you'll need to save that. You can preview it here, but you'll want to save it here to save that as part of your background. Now, very important, you want to put in your social media links. There are a number of things that we're doing today with your current mobile and whatnot. Put in your LinkedIn address. That's the address directly to your LinkedIn account. Your Facebook address, that's directly to your Facebook account. And if you have a Twitter, a Twitter address. Once you put in an address, those icons will show up on your mobile app and on other applications such as the microsites and things. So all of these are WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Leave something blank. It doesn't exist. It doesn't turn on. Put in an address. That turns that link on for you in different places. Report colors. This is very important. These are your branding colors for your report. There's a primary color for your report and a secondary. Most company colors and, and, and logos and things are based on a two-color format. And by designing it this way, this allows you to pick two colors that will work with your overall brand imagery. So select a primary color for your reports. If you're not sure, and I'm going to hit Control C and just save this one so I can come back to it, you can come through here and hunt and peck and just click through the uh, uh, colors and see if you can find something that looks pretty close to what it is that you're wanting to use for your particular uh, thing, for your logo. This is your primary color, so it's going to be a bigger color. It's going to be more predominant uh, on your um, site. The secondary color is going to be a smaller color that would be associated with your brand. Same thing, you can pick something individually or you can just put in the actual color. You can put in the HTML color or the RGB color if you know the color of your actual graphics. Put that color in there and when you click Save, it's going to save those colors for you. Now, last thing on this page, Report Attachment. You have the ability to attach to any presentation that you're going to make a PDF of your own making. Now, this is a really cool feature because you can create your own company brochure. Uh, your company might have specific additional disclosures and things that they want you to have. So this gives you the flexibility to go out there. And if you're not familiar with creating PDFs, there are tons of free PDF creators on the Internet and on the web. Simply go create a brochure or something you'd like to see part of your presentation uh, and then click here, click Add a PDF and you'll browse to that file and save it. Once you do that, it won't automatically put that on your reports, but on your presentation page, when you're creating a presentation, 
you'll be able to attach that PDF when you want to. We've seen loan officers create uh, files, for example, a company brochure, their unique process, uh, attaching a, a paper 1003 or other document that they want to be part of every plan or that they want to be able to include with some plans. So again, just a very cool feature that you can use. Again, most of these features, when you're first getting started on a quick start basis, I would just focus on your photo, logo, report graphic and information, pick your background color, put in your social media, get a report color in here, and it doesn't have to be perfect, just get something in there today to get started with and you can tweak it over time. Add a report down the road if you don't have something or an attachment today if you want. And if you have specific logos, maybe you're a bank, member FDIC, uh, maybe you're equal housing lender, you can pick these different logos and these will automatically show up on your reports from a disclosure perspective. So that's it. This is your branding page. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save All Changes again. That's going to save everything that I've done here and get me to the right place. I'm going to change that back to a gray since uh, that matches my logo. See here I've got kind of a dark gray and a green. So I'm going to use the same color scheme in my reports and you'll see how, how nice that looks. So that's our first page. Now this could take you, you know, five minutes to set up, but once you're done, unless you need to come back and tweak or edit something, there's really nothing that you need to come back and do on this particular page. Now the second tab is your defaults tab. And the defaults tab under your account uh, shows you all of the mortgage products that are currently available in the system. Unless you or your company have added additional products, these are the ones you have to work with. Every product that's checked will be available and active for you when you're creating plans for your clients. If there are products that you don't currently use or you don't currently have access to, we recommend that you remove them. And to do that, simply uncheck the box. By unchecking the box, these products will no longer show up on your actual uh, planning pages. And that'll create you know, less, uh, less work for you to find different products. 10 year, 15, 20, 25, maybe you don't have a 40, maybe you don't have a 30 year IO, maybe you don't do reverse mortgages, um, maybe you don't have a one month anymore that you use, maybe you have uh, uh, no interest only anymore. So you're just going to go through this one time and just match it up and say, I just want all the products checked that I'm currently offering for first mortgage and for second mortgage. Now, once you check your products, the next thing that you want to do is go through, and again, this is just something you do the very first time you're in the software, unless you need to come back and edit something, is anytime you see a box like this, this is what we call a helper default box, the seven-year arm, I want to click this box, and this is going to let me set up my defaults. So for the seven-year arm, I know that the first adjustment is going to be in the 84th month, and the adjustment cap for that is going to be 2%, and then it's going to adjust every 12 months up to 2%, the life cap is say 12. This is whatever it is for you, a life floor of four. Uh, I'm going to use a margin right now of, of 2.5 and I can edit this within the software. I don't have to come back to here. This is just to get something up for you quickly. I'm going to use this based on an index here of 0.5. Uh, or I mean, just maybe I'll just leave that blank because I know that's changing all the time. But I know that I usually use a six month LIBOR. And I know that I want to use a worst case scenario. And we'll talk more about what that means in a minute, but that means as a default, um, I want to use the worst case because I want to be in compliance and uh, most uh, state and other lending laws now require that on an ARM analysis, you at least have a worst case scenario in your mix. And I save that. So take a few minutes and do this for each of the different ARMs. And again, you noticed here, everything got, got reselected because I'd forgotten to uh, save it. So whenever you make a change, before you go through and make another change, make sure that you save those changes. Uh, when you're sitting here talking sometimes it's easy to uh, to forget. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say I don't have a, a 30 year I, I don't have a 40, I don't have a one month, I don't have any of the interest onlys right now. Some banks, some companies have those. So get your products up, come down here, click the save changes button. Now go into each of your arms and go through and do your editing for each of those to set your defaults. And with each of these, you don't have to go down and save because you're going to save it right on the individual tab of the page. This gets you set up with all your products. Now you'll notice that conforming and jumbo rates are blank. You'll notice that if I don't have a loan product selected, then I don't need to put a rate in here. And you'll also notice if I leave this blank, 
And what the software is going to do is when you're doing a plan, it's going to automatically insert for you the default national average for that product. That allows you then to go in and put in whatever rate you want when you're creating your actual plan. So there's no need to put in any rates in here. You can do that when you're creating your plan unless you want to default to some certain rates right now. I recommend you leave these blank unless we're feeding these in from a rate engine for you or uh, you want to go through and just say right now I want my 30 year fix to always say 4. If you do that we're going to show 4 and then you can edit on your plan. But I recommend you leave all of these blank. Just go through and click your products and get those products set up and good to go. Now the last thing on the defaults page here is go ahead and set up your defaults for taxes and insurance, closing costs, your jumbo threshold, appreciation rates and things like that. Uh, you may see a disclosure box here and that's where you can edit your disclosure on your report page. That's something that's being added this week. Um, you can use our default language or you can edit it yourself. Again, you can always override these when you're creating the actual plan. But sometimes it's nice if you know property taxes in your market are 1.25 percent and homeowners is typically 0.3 and there's no homeowners association. You know that your origination fee you charge is typically 1 percent. Uh, or that you know that on average in your market closing costs are around 2500 right now, um, then you can go ahead and put these defaults in. It just makes things faster for you. I use a default appreciation rate of 2%, a default after savings rate of 5%, uh, the jumbo limit 417, 417000. And again, I'm going to click Save All Changes so that those are all saved here. It's just going to save me a little bit of time when I'm creating plans later on because we're going to show you in a future video how you can create plans in just a couple of minutes that are going to really blow away your clients. So that's it. This defaults page, again, it may change as well. You'll see new options and new features, but these two tabs here, branding and defaults, are something that you'll need to come to rarely, if ever, once you get it set up. This is your first video. It's your first time through. Get your branding and defaults set up. The billing tab is where you edit and manage your account. Now this will definitely be changing by the time you see this video, but that's okay. It's just a place where you can manage your account. You can upgrade or downgrade. You can add different features and different functionality uh, to the software that you're using. So hopefully you won't have to come here often unless it's to upgrade or add some additional services because you just simply love the tool. So that's it for this first video. When you're getting started, you want to focus on the My Accounts tab. Get this set up. This is going to be helpful because once you go over and start looking at the presentations which we'll do next and how to create them and how to manage them you're going to see all of this branding flow through on your reports uh, and on the uh, materials the flyers and things that you begin to present so if you have any questions as always feel free to give us a call uh, we're here to help you uh, you can email us and support at candletodd.com that's the fastest way to get us if you have a question you email it to support we'll respond in most cases with a video we'll do a quick video answer your question and we'll send it right back to you. If your question is one that we've already gotten from another user, we'll forward you that video back and you can watch a quick 30, 60 second video and we'll help you to solve your problem. So wish you the best. I look forward to continuing to learn with you in the video series. Take some time, tweak this, get it all set up for yourself. And the next video will focus on your presentations.